scientists solve the mystery behind the Amuamua alien spacecraft comet. Scientists uncover what accelerated an interstellar comet through our solar system. Interstellar object Amuamua probably moves strangely due to gas, study says. Amuamua was a comet after all, a study suggests. Mysterious space object Amuamua, not alien, scientists say. These are just a few of an army of headlines from the mainstream media declaring that the Amuamua mystery has finally been explained. Oh, by the way, this is the third time this has actually happened, and I hope these examples finally put to rest any sort of notion that the media is more likely to embrace sensationalistic ideas about aliens than they are to swiftly embrace any sort of theory that puts people who believe in extraterrestrial civilizations into a silly category along with people who believe in Bigfoot or the abominable snowman or as I said before the abominable snow monster of the north so what is this theory well, put in its simplest terms, this theory proposes the idea that Oumuamua was indeed a comet, even though no cometary outgassing was ever observed with this particular object, because most of the elements that make a comet a comet were burned off in interstellar space, and the only thing that remained of this comet, aside from rock, was hydrogen. And since our instruments are not able to observe hydrogen, that's what was outgassing and that's what caused Oumuamua to accelerate out of the solar system without any obvious means of propulsion. We've never seen a comet like this, but it is theoretically possible that the rigors of interstellar space could burn off virtually all of the elements that make a comet a comet, except for the hydrogen. It's a very compelling theory, a very elegant theory, and it's almost certainly wrong. Good morning and welcome to episode 3 of my 100k celebration. By the way, if you haven't seen the other two episodes associated with this celebration, they will be linked at the end of this video. And by the way, it also includes a contest, a contest that's different for every episode. And we're going to have a contest in this particular episode as well, but that's coming up very soon. So you've seen the introduction that I did in regards to this new theory theory about Oumuamua, a theory that was so quickly and enthusiastically embraced by the scientific community as being so simple, so elegant, so brilliant, etc. And I'm not actually going to argue with a lot of those words that were used to describe it. Yes, it is simple, it's straightforward, it is even elegant. I wouldn't necessarily call it brilliant, though, and also the fact that it has been so quickly and wholeheartedly embraced without really a whole lot of critical analysis, I find that to be very troubling as well. And so when it came out and when I read it, I... You know, there are a few holes that even I saw right off the bat. And once again, I'm not an astronomer or an astrophysicist. Yes, I've been studying these topics for decades on my own, but I'm, I'm not, you know, officially educated in these fields. And there are many things that I don't know about it. So I was hesitant to come out with anything refuting it on my own, even though, as you're going to see later on the in the video, I do have a couple of things to say on my own about all of this. But I didn't have long to wait. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Avi Loeb, pretty much the only person that's 
ever going to be critical of these kinds of explanations simply because the scientific community so desperately wants to prove that this is a natural phenomenon like everything else they see in the universe. Well, he finally did come out with an article. Actually, it didn't take him very long to come out with an article refuting it. And the number of weak points in this explanation are legion. And they are nowhere near as compelling and as elegant as the artificial explanation that Dr. Loeb came up with five years ago. The only thing, of course, about an artificial explanation is the fact that the scientific community refuses to believe that extraterrestrial civilizations could possibly be visiting us or that there's any evidence of their technology that can be observed anywhere in the universe. They simply don't believe that that's possible. And if you think that I'm being a little too harsh on them in this regard, well, you're going to see a couple of quotes from people, again, well-respected in the community, well-respected astronomers, whose views on extraterrestrial civilizations and also the people who happen to believe that those civilizations might exist and could be responsible for some of the phenomena that we see in the universe, well, this statement is going to blow your mind. So first of all, what makes a Muamua so unusual in the first place? Well, obviously, it's the first object, interstellar object, that we've ever detected passing through our solar system. It also happened to pass very... It was also strangely elongated. But the thing that was the most important about a Muamua, the strangest thing of all, was the fact that it appeared to accelerate out of our solar system with no visible means of propulsion. That is to say, the sorts of astronauts astronomical objects that we observe that do this sort of thing naturally have some sort of cometary outgassing. Outgassing of rapidly evaporating elements, usually water, oxygen, that sort of thing. However, a detailed analysis of a muamua conducted with our most advanced scientific instruments produced absolutely nothing. No evidence of any sort of outgassing, dust, residual particles, nothing whatsoever, which led Dr. Loeb to speculate that it was solar radiation alone that caused the observed acceleration, and that could only happen if a muamua was very thin, very light, and something very much like a light sail or perhaps some sort of hollow object, similar perhaps to a rocket booster. And by the way, we have observed similar behavior with rocket boosters and other artificial objects that we ourselves create. But this explanation was quickly rejected by the scientific community as being as ridiculous as believing that Osiris or Zeus was pushing a muamua by such some sort of strange divine force. And if you think I'm exaggerating here, let me get a quote from Roman Rafikov of Cambridge University, who, by the way, explained that any sort of cometary outgassing would have alts or divine forces. Let me say that again. An explanation that does not imply involve aliens or divine forces. So what that means is anybody who believes that an astronomical phenomena might be caused by an extraterrestrial civilization is as irrational as somebody who might believe that the Greek or Egyptian gods might be responsible for it. It's hard to believe that people this educated would say something that stupid. But ironically, herein lies one of the biggest problems with this theory. By the way, this was proposed by Jennifer Bergner of the University of California, Berkeley. And by the way, I've got no problem with what she's doing here. This is a very innovative theory in an environment where if you propose these sorts of natural theories, you are likely to further your career as opposed to embracing the theories of Avi Loeb, which is akin to committing professional suicide just as surely as if you you decided to become an anti-vaxxer or a climate change denier, and yeah, I just triggered a whole bunch of people right there, but let's predict a predicted trajectory that would have caused the tumbling rate of a muamua to change in some way, which it never did. The rate of tumbling for this object remained steady, consistent, and predictable, again, very much like an artificial object. 
And incidentally, the reason that these unconventional theories keep getting proposed is because we didn't observe any sort of visible outgassing, and so scientists continue to put forward theories where the outgassing would not have been observable. First, they started with a hydrogen iceberg, which is the strangest thing I've ever heard of, and by the way, that was debunked, and then it was followed up by a nitrogen iceberg, that was also debunked, and now finally, a comet that no longer has any gas that could cause any outgassing except for the one gas that we couldn't detect with our instruments. In other words, hydrogen. But this explanation is just as full of holes as the previous ones, and Avi Loeb does a great job of explaining that to us. Quote, Since Bergner and Seligman, who are the authors of the paper, by the way, admit that a pure water iceberg or pure hydrogen iceberg are not viable models for a muamua, it's unclear how mixing two failing models would make a successful solution. In particular, when hydrogen evaporates from a water iceberg, it would give less kick to the water than to a pure hydrogen iceberg because of the higher molecular weight of water. Moreover, if hydrogen evaporates easily from water ice, then it would not survive the journey, just as in the case of a pure hydrogen iceberg. These issues are not addressed in the new paper. In addition, millions and millions of years that it takes to travel between stars, well, that that is also an absurd notion given the fact that the other interstellar object that we have observed, the first interstellar comet, 21 Borisov, behaved exactly like a comet, and Avi Loeb points this out, quote, A Muamua cannot be a typical comet like 21 Borisov since there was no evidence for any carbon-based molecules or dust around a Muamua based on deep infrared observations by the Spitzer Space Telescope. If the authors were correct, Correct. and Oumuamua was a typical water ice comet exposed to cosmic rays, then the interstellar object 21 Borisov would not have appeared to possess an obvious cometary tail. In fact, long-period comets from the solar system's Oort cloud are exposed to the same cosmic ray environment as interstellar objects like Oumuamua because they are outside the heliosphere where the solar wind is stopped from protecting them. Yet, Oort cloud comets do show the familiar cometary tails. Arguing that a generic icy comet is without a tail is like saying an elephant is a generic zebra just without showing its stripes. Of course, there could be exceptions where the evaporation rate is low, but those would not account for the excess acceleration of a muamua, which requires that at least a tenth of the object's mass be lost in a tail when the acceleration was observed. Dr. Loeb then goes on to examine the problem in greater detail. To understand how much mass is needed to evaporate from a muamua, let's go through some numbers. Cometary evaporation leads to the rocket effect through which the momentum of the evaporated gas towards the sun is pushing the object away from the sun. This is the same mechanism that pushes rockets or jet planes. The new model requires that molecular hydrogen account for this significant fraction of the total mass and most of it to evaporate. When a muamua was observed, the temperature of the evaporated hydrogen was was on an order of 100 degrees Kelvin above absolute zero. The speed of the evaporated hydrogen cannot be larger than the thermal speed of a hydrogen molecule at that temperature, about a kilometer per second, which is a few percent of the speed of which a muamua left the Earth. The atomic mass of oxygen is 16 times that of hydrogen, meaning that water, two hydrogen atoms per oxygen atom, carries eight times more mass than the hydrogen mass in it. Therefore, if we we assume, in the most favorable case, that all of the hydrogen evaporated from a muamua, the velocity kick in the remnant object would amount to a few percent divided by eight, which is 0.3% of a muamua's speed near the Earth. The observed push of a muamua was about 0.1% of a muamua's speed. This implies that a third of all the available hydrogen in the water iceberg must evaporate in order to give a muamua the observed kick. Given that a movement where hydrogen shouldn't be a gas at all, all of these things make this explanation completely implausible, and yet Dr. Loeb is the only one bringing these topics up. 
Why is this? Well, once again, it's because the scientific community is desperate to embrace any explanation that would make a muamua a natural phenomenon rather than an artificial one. And Avi Loeb closes his article as follows. Sometimes I feel like the kid in Hans Christian Andersen folktale who suggested that the emperor has no clothes, while the adults watching the procession insisted that the emperor is dressed with fancy clothing. In my case, the emperor is a muamua, and the clothes are its invisible cometary tail. So all of us have heard about the Fermi paradox, I would assume. The whole idea that given the length or the time the universe has been in existence, given the age of the universe, even at a small percentage of the speed of light, some civilization would have had the capability to visit every solar system in the galaxy by now, many times over, actually. So where are they? Well, as I have argued since I began this channel, and really this is something I believe for some time, they're here. They've always been here. There's evidence of their existence all around us. And finally, we have an object that's passed through our solar system that passes all of the criteria for a piece of extraterrestrial technology that's actually come a bit uncomfortably close to our own planet. It's an amazing thing. It's something that should be studied more thoroughly and more theories should be proposed. But instead, the scientific community, the dictatorship, the tyranny of the majority in the scientific community tells us that if we come up with any sort of theories like this, if we say that this is the work of some sort of extraterrestrial civilization or of an advanced mind outside of our own species, then you, if you believe in that, you also believe in Osiris and Athena and Zeus and that they're influencing things that we see around the universe. You are just as irrational. And of course, if they believe that you are that irrational, you're not going to get any grant funding, you're not going to get any sort of prestigious positions, and you're not going to have a very promising career. And that's why so few scientists actually come out with any sort of extraterrestrial explanation, any sort of artificial explanation for these phenomena. It's unacceptable. It's not scientific. And it's the kind of thing that we used to see back during the times of Galileo, the tyranny of the Catholic Church, insisting that we stick to their paradigm rather than propose ideas that they thought could not be true. It's hard to believe that that sort of idiocy exists today, but it does exist as we have seen in this episode. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Also, I'm leaving for Alabama in a few days. If you'd like to support that trip, just a little bit more help would be appreciated. The links are in the description. And as always, guys, stay angry about space.